This video deals with radio frequency interference on your sound system. It does not cover AC hum or buzz. We have a different video for AC interference. By radio frequency interference, hereafter called RFI, I am referring specifically to picking up a radio station on your sound system. If you sometimes hear your local AM station on your speakers, this video is for you. The first thing you should do is make sure that your microphone lines are all balanced and wired correctly. If all your connectors are 3 pin XLR style, similar to this, they are probably balanced. If they are two conductor quarter inch phone connectors like this, they are not balanced. All sound system microphones and mic lines need to be balanced. Otherwise you are almost guaranteed to have problems. If you want to learn more about balanced and unbalanced audio, we have another video on our website dedicated to this subject. Assuming they are all balanced, you might want to make sure they are wired correctly. Here is a diagram of the correct wiring for balanced microphone plugs and jacks. Make sure that your system is wired this way. Make sure that the shield is only connected to pin 1 at each end of the cable. Don't jumper it to the connector case. If it is jumpered, disconnect the jumper because you are probably creating a ground loop. Once you have confirmed your wiring, you can continue to troubleshoot the RFI. Before you can fix the problem, you need to figure out where the RFI is getting into your system. You need to be hearing the interference before you can troubleshoot it. RFI is often intermittent, depending on time of day and weather conditions. If it is not happening at the time you want to fix it, you need to wait until it is. So, assuming you can hear the radio station, here are the steps I recommend. Usually RFI is coming through the microphone lines which act as antennae, carrying the RF, or radio frequency, into the mixer. Once this RF reaches the input to the mixer, the mixer preamplifier demodulates the radio frequency leaving you with the audio interference. This is the audio that you hear on your speakers and recordings. To find out if this is the case, turn off all the channel faders, or volume controls, on your mixer and see if the interference goes away. If it does, you are probably in luck. If it doesn't, you should watch the video called RFI Troubleshooting Part 2 Beyond the Mic Lines. Now turn each channel control back on, one at a time, and see which channels bring the interference back. It may be one or two, or it may be all of them. You might also find that turning one on brings it back, and then turning another one on at the same time reduces it or makes it disappear. If this is the case, it is due to phase cancellation, and you actually have the problem with both channels. If you are working with an installed system, where the microphones are plugged into jacks, which in turn are connected to the mixer inputs. Try unplugging each microphone to make sure your problem is not with the microphone itself or its cable. You should also try unplugging the microphone cable from the problem channel of the mixer and then turning up the channel volume. This way you can make sure it is actually the microphone cable causing the trouble and not the mixer channel itself. If you still have the problem even with the cable unplugged, it is likely a problem with the mixer. Assuming that the RFI is coming through the microphone lines and you don't have a condenser microphone with a separate preamp, which I will explain later in this video, the solution is to stop the RF from getting into the mixer. This is done by adding our MLRFIF filter cable between the microphone cable and the mixer input. Unplug the connector from the mixer channel input and plug one end of the MLRFIF cable into the channel input. Then plug the microphone cable into the other end of the MLRFIF. This cable filters out the radio frequency. With the RF gone, the mixer has nothing to demodulate and therefore there is no audio interference. In most cases this is the only effective solution. Often, no matter what microphone cable you use and how you run it, you can't get rid of the RFI without this filter. A minute ago I alluded to condenser microphones with separate preamps. Here's the story. As I mentioned above, the problem starts as radio frequency, 
which you cannot hear. In order for it to become audio, which you can hear, it needs to be demodulated. In most cases, it remains RF until it reaches the mixer input where it is demodulated. This can be fixed with the MLRFIF filter cable. However, there are, of course, exceptions. A condenser microphone requires its own preamp module. In most cases, such as handheld or gooseneck condenser microphones, the preamp module is built into the microphone housing and does not present any problem. If, however, you have a hanging choir microphone or a gooseneck microphone with a separate preamp module, you probably do have a more serious problem. Instead of the microphone line which is plugged into the mixer carrying the RF to the mixer, with these microphones it is usually the wire between the microphone element or cartridge and its preamp which acts as the antenna carrying the RF into the microphone preamp. It is the microphone preamp that demodulates the signal instead of the mixer preamp. This means that it is not RF which comes into the mixer input but the actual audio. In this case the filter cable will not help. Unfortunately the only effective solution is to replace the microphone with a different one which has a built-in preamp. You might still need the MLRFIF filter at the mixer end, but now it will probably work. Gooseneck microphones are easy to replace. Simply install a new one which is completely self-contained. For hanging choir microphones, you will need to drop a standard balanced microphone cable to the proper height and plug in a short gooseneck microphone. In many cases, the same microphone cartridge used in choir microphones is available in a gooseneck version. So it is not a problem getting the right sound, pickup range, and pattern. So, if your RFI is coming through your microphone lines, what you have just learned should help you. If it is not coming through the microphone wiring, you should watch our other RFI troubleshooting video, Part 2.